Hello, everybody. Welcome to this press conference with the Director General of UNESCO, Irina Bokova, and the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology of Japan, Hakuben Shimomura. We have about half an hour for this press conference. We have simultaneous translation in English, Japanese, French, and Spanish. Please use your headphones if you want to hear the simultaneous translation. When you ask a question, please be recognized by me first and tell us who you are and what media agency you represent. Uh, Director General, could I ask you to start maybe with a few remarks? Um, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. I'm sorry. The interpreters are just setting down. Sorry. Yeah. I think they rushed from the Shiratori Hall, and very sorry. They're the same group yeah. that interpreated the last session, so yeah, they have sorry. to move also. We have to be very grateful to all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, just a brief introduction. Although I know I know that um, you, ladies and gentlemen from the press, uh, have been following um, this uh, very uh, intense uh, day. Uh, and I would say also the preceding uh, events uh, in Okayama uh, with the stakeholders meeting. Uh, let me just uh, thank uh, once again uh, the government of uh, Japan, uh, Minister uh, Shimomura, uh, the uh, prefecture of Aichi, the city of uh, Nagoya, uh, all our partners, uh, and also uh, the city of uh, Okayama, because this conference was preceded by a very important stakeholders uh, meeting where uh, we had uh, also uh, a youth forum and an important meeting of uh, representatives of the associated network uh, of schools with UNESCO. Um, I'm also uh, very grateful uh, to uh, His Imperial Highness, uh, the Crown Prince, and Her Imperial Highness, the Crown Princess, for uh, attending, uh, opening uh, this morning uh, the conference. Uh, he testifies to the importance of Japan a pace to the uh, United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development that uh, Japan initiated, and uh, we are taking stock now of uh, uh, the outcomes of the, uh, this decade and also the way forward. Today, we had uh, a very extensive uh, discussions, uh, even now, coming from a high-level roundtable uh, to see what are the challenges, what are the success stories, and where we are heading for. Uh, let me just say that um, uh, this conference uh, indeed is a major event uh, in, the, I would say, the recent years of uh, the efforts of UNESCO and also the government of Japan and other member states to put forward to the global agenda the issues about education for sustainable development. Uh, ESD, as we have the acronym, which is about knowledge, which is about values, which is about skills, which is about peace, which is about tolerance, and which is about, of course, protecting of the uh, environment, and fundamentally about leaving this planet for the future generations in a sustainable manner. Uh, it's, uh, I would say, a relatively new concept, which is uh, evolving, and uh, the fact that for the first time we have included education for sustainable development already into the uh, our vision for the future sustainable goal in education in the process of post-2015 debate uh, within the United Nations and global community already, I believe, uh, is a success. Is a success in terms of uh, making a strong case for that. Is a success also because already we have a number of very good examples uh, in, at a national level, at a regional, and at the global level. And uh, uh, I think Japan is uh, itself showcasing uh, a very strong commitment uh, towards education for sustainable development by including it into embedding it very strongly into the national uh, education system. And also, which is very important, it is about working with our stakeholders. Because as we say, creating green societies, not moving only towards green economies, but green societies is a responsibility not only of governments, it is of course of governments, and uh, 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 how, what kind of education systems are set, but also of the private sector, strong involvement 
of the civil society, of the universities, of the academia globally, of experts. And this is, I believe, where the strength of this conference also stays. So I will end up here. Of course, I'm ready to further on to answer questions, but I guess Minister Shim uh, Shimamura would like to have uh, also an important message to you. Hi. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Today, with uh, their Highness uh, Imperial Crown Prince and Princesses, Princess, as well as uh, uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Hassana of Morocco have joined us, as well as uh, uh, ministerial level participation from uh, 156 countries uh, have been there. And I am most delighted that uh, the CSD World UNESCO World Conference has been able to start today here in Nagoya. In the opening plenary session, we have looked back at uh, the past decade of ESD, of the UN, and also uh, the uh, representatives of different countries have uh, expressed their commitments for the further ev development of ESD for the post-2015 uh, period. And also, representative of the Youth Conference, which was held in Okayama last year, joined our, us uh, in the plenary. And uh, he ha uh, was not scared at all, uh, without an, uh, any fear, he uh, expressed his himself in the presence of uh, Director General Bokova and all the representatives and distinguished guests, and I felt from that uh, speech of that youth representative that uh, uh, we can be very uh, encouraged uh, for the future generations who will be bearing, uh, supporting uh, the future society. And uh, during the line, uh, time, uh, the, uh, Mr. Sen, uh, UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, uh, organized the tea ceremony event. After that, uh, we, uh, I mean, um, uh, Director General Bokova and myself co chaired the high level uh, roundtable discussion with the representatives at the ministerial levels of various countries. Mr. Stefan Ko moderated the session at the high level uh, roundtable and uh, uh, regarding the uh, promoting of uh, ESD in the future. I think uh, we uh, have had a very meaningful, good discussion. 37 countries' representatives made a statement, and I think that we were able to share a, a strong feeling of necessity of further promotion of ESD going f uh, forward. In the world, uh, there are ex excellent initiatives for ESD. Japan has created, Japan has decided to create, uh, to uh, 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 award those excellent uni initiatives, the UNESCO Japan Prize uh, on Education of sustain uh, for Sustainable Development. That decision of uh, the creation of this uh, prize was announced in this uh, plenary meeting today, and uh, we uh, are hoping that this uh, prize will serve as a strong uh, motivation for uh, those who will be taking initiatives to promote ESD and uh, to practice it going uh, into the future. And uh, each Nagoya declaration uh, will be ex uh, announced uh, in the uh, closing plenary session of this conference uh, after two days a meaningful a good discussion. I am having a high expectation for this discussion over these two days and this Aichi Nagoya uh, declaration I uh, expect for it to strongly, further strongly promote the initiatives to promote uh, uh, ESD at the different levels of stakeholders. Ten years ago Prime Minister then uh, Koizumi took the decision, uh, decision of being involved in ESD. I think he was uh, having a such a foresight, personally, because back then, 10 years ago, not many people were that interested in ESD, and uh, it, that was the case in Japan as well. Uh, there is an abnormal te a temperature rising in Japan, and uh, the climate changes have affected Japan, and particularly in the recent years, we have suffered from many natural disasters here in Japan. And in this uh, context, many people uh, were thinking that uh, sustainable development would be very challenging and difficult. In that uh, uh, the context, uh, being able to host and organize this uh, UNESCO World Conference on ESD, uh, it is uh, to my biggest pleasure. 
807 schools in Japan uh, are associated to the ESD. That's the biggest number uh, uh, all over the world amongst all the countries. But I am feeling that this 807 school is still a very small number uh, facing our uh, challenge of today. Yesterday, we had an, uh, a reception and uh, re uh, related event in th uh, that I s said in my speech that we have to raise the number of ESD related associated school to 10,000. Many Japanese people reacted uh, to my statement saying that the 10,000 schools would not be even sufficient. All of the children in the world should be involved in DSD. I entirely agree with that uh, feeling. Various uh, shapes of initiatives can be possible in order to promote ESD, but accelerating the pr uh, initiatives for the promotion of ESD is the key, I think, uh, in order for us to be able to convey more effectively our message over to uh, the different parts of the world uh, so that the ESD uh, being back to its essential goal once again uh, to be able to make a further progress is going into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director General and Minister. The floor is now open for questions. Do you, does anyone here have questions for our two guests? Yes, uh, please identify yourself and uh, tell us which media outlet you're working for. Imaizumi from Gigi Press. I, I would like to ask a question to Dir Director General Bokova and then to uh, uh, Minister Shimomura. First to, to Ms. Bokova, Madam Bokova. Uh, in the plenary session and high level uh, panels, uh, different countries' representatives expressed themselves about their successes as well as the challenges. Uh, uh, listening to the high level discussion, uh, there are funding challenges and uh, funding available differences uh, uh, based on which uh, the success degrees of, uh, in terms of ESD uh, for each country has been uh, uh, very uh, variable. And some uh, the countries' representatives said that the indicators are per perhaps necessary in order to evaluate the success of ESD. Do you have any plan or idea to develop such in indicators? Next uh, question to Mr. Shimomura. Well, Japan has been one of the most active countries working on ESD, however, in the fields, in the school and uh, including us uh, press people, the awareness of ESD is still very at a low level in the reality. Uh, you, uh, Mr. Shimomura mentioned an attempt to increase further the number of e e ESD associated to school in Japan. What are the uh, uh, specific plan ideas that you have to further promote ESD in Japan? Thank you. And challenges. Um, this is a very, very interesting question uh, because um, uh, as uh, the discussion went uh, in the round table uh, in the afternoon, uh, you, I agree with you that um, uh, the practice and what emerges uh, currently at the national level is very uneven. Uh, there are countries who are much more advanced in uh, uh, education for sustainable development, in integrating it into uh, uh, education systems. Uh, there are those who uh, still uh, are lagging behind for different reasons. Uh, uh, and not necessarily always because of the funding. Um, I think it's uh, the uh, overall understanding of the importance uh, uh, making the case of how and why it should be integrated into the education system uh, was one of the uh, main uh, aims of uh, this international uh, United Nations decade. Um, and of course, uh, you are right that um, uh, there are countries uh, which still uh, confront uh, mainly the problems with the access to education, uh, others who are looking more into the quality of education, but I believe now that we are moving towards 2015, we want to merge the two challenges together because we do believe that um, you cannot dissociate any more access from quality because of poor quality of education, uh, kids cannot go to school because of poor quality of education, kids go to school, but then they leave the system after primary education functionally illiterate. And that is why, unfortunately, our global monitoring reports show that there are 250 million young people nowadays in the world who have been through a formal schooling, but they are illiterate people, uh, let alone speaking about education for sustainable development. So. Our vision for the post-2015 is, of course, to take into account the unfinished business, to get seriously about access to education, but to do it also uh, jointly 
with improving the quality of education and when systems are reformed, then to introduce when curricula are reviewed, when teachers are trained, when we introduce technical vocational training and skills for young people in order to reduce unemployment, then also this should be mainstreamed and this should be accompanied by measures to introduce uh, I would say elements of education for sustainable development. This is critical. It cannot be left for after. Uh, our, our main uh, argument here is that we cannot leave education for sustainable development for after, so to say, the other issues of education are being uh, already solved. It has, they have to go hand in hand. There is no time to lose. There is an urgency. In, in our call. And that is why this conference, as we say, is a call to action. And the second question, of course, you're right that um, one of the uh, challenges for the future is uh, monitoring, evaluation, and assessment of the progress. And it can be done, of course, in different, uh, uh, in different manners. Um, uh, one uh, uh, of the uh, possible options that we are also working is uh, to have uh, some specific indicators. It's a new area of uh, our uh, uh, intervention. Uh, another very successful tool also is the national reporting. We are strongly promoting a national reporting among member states of uh, education for sustainable development. It mobilizes uh, a lot of, uh, um, I would say, internal reviews of the uh, education system. A very important tool is uh, also uh, mutual accountability among member states of uh, sharing good practices and uh, good experiences of uh, holding member states uh, each other accountable uh, at the regional level or uh, any other um, sub-regional level of uh, what uh, member states are, are doing. But definitely monitoring and evaluation is a, a new area that has to be developed if we want to have a substantial progress uh, in, in this area. Thank you very much. I entirely agree. Agree. I fully agree with the point uh, which has just been made with the holding of the World Conference on EST. That is uh, contributing to the boosting of the level of awareness uh, in the, amongst the Japanese population about the EST. Uh, some press uh, reported that way, but the, uh, the awareness level uh, is still very low. According to our surveys, only 20% of the population in Japan is aware of EST. You, ESD has been led by uh, in the UN settings, specifically by UNESCO. So people at the first glance think that it's something which is very, very sophisticated in terms of the content. Many schools reacted that way initially. When I try to convince many schools uh, to introduce ESD into their program, they said that they're not up to the, the level to be able to introduce such an initiative. Uh, so in the field already, before listening to the actual content of ESD, there has been a reaction of re rejection. But uh, uh, not being called ESD as such, but in the environmental area, there are some uh, uh, talks ongoing, or there are schools or organizations which are very eager and active in terms of the in the area of uh, environmental uh, conservation. And also, Japan has been very active in terms of strengthening uh, the capacities uh, uh, of local communities and to animate the, uh, the uh, provinces in Japan in order to make them more autonomous and active. Uh, that can also contribute to uh, the uh, sustainable development. So even without the title of uh, ESD as such, uh, various uh, titles which fall in the category of initiative of ESD have already been commenced in Japan. That is my feeling. Uh, so listening to the uh, statements of different countries' rep representatives, I see that there is a wide variety in terms of the shapes of initiatives of ESD. ESD is not uh, uh, being practiced, not being uh, purely based on the concept of ESD, but in the various uh, uh, 
ways in, uh, through adaptation to different realities uh, of different countries and regions. I, uh, so the, uh, with this uh, findings from the high-level roundtable discussion, I feel that it is much more possible for us to disseminate further the ESD over different countries. There were four different uh, questions on the list uh, uh, put forward for the high-level uh, roundtable, but uh, uh, number four, question number four, uh, 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 what are the challenges for the government to enhance, to strengthen further the policy support to promote the ESD? That's question four. Uh, what's particularly focused on, although many people did not address all of the four questions, yesterday we had a, a side event at the University of Nagoya, and during the daytime, Professor Amano, one of the no Nobel Prize uh, uh, Laureate, I had an opportunity to talk with Professor Amano, and uh, through uh, promoting, pr uh, through further promotion of ESD, and uh, through further research works on uh, uh, LED, and uh, there will be an able uh, a, a possibility to contribute further to the energy saving. That was uh, uh, the comment made by mm -hmm. Professor Amano. So ESD will be able uh, to. Uh, contribute to the future of the world in a more uh, sustainable way. That is, uh, in my opinion, is one contribution that ESD can really make. So uh, from that, we have to think about uh, what innovation in terms of science technology should be happening. And uh, based on that, we have to think what resources, what type of human resources should be developed. Of course, uh, their education at the basic level is uh, critical, but also at the top level, so-called top level uh, uh, capacity building and resource development uh, to, uh, at the level of uh, uh, cutting edge, the most advanced science and research is also a contributing factor to the ESD. So I would like to address at all levels of education uh, to promote further ESD going forward. These schedules, but I think we have time for one more question. Uh, the gentleman here, please. from Southern Africa, and just before I ask my question, I'd like to thank UNESCO for having funded um, a lot of workshops in Southern Africa to help uh, journalists from there who are struggling to report on ESD issues, which are essentially scientific, economic, social, health, and all the cross-cutting issues, but they're not aware of those issues. They cannot link them in their stories because they were not trained on ESD as you are trying to do at school, and neither were they trained at uh, journalism schools. So after having thanked you, I, I just want to know what are the sustainable mechanisms you are going to use or concept to involve the media as vehicles to promote ESD because it's about change of mindsets, lifestyles, consumption patterns. And the messenger is not really prepared to do that in Africa particularly in the south where I come from because they are not trained. In fact, the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. I know no school of journalism uh, which is focusing on environment and development issues. I have discovered that in the thesis I just did with Rhodes University and it's such a big gap in Africa. Thank you very much. Well, um, it's, uh, uh, it's a very important question and thank you for appreciating um, what UNESCO is doing for, for journalists, uh, you know that um, one of our mandates, of course, is to support media journalism to promote the freedom of expression. Uh, and overall, uh, I would say to have the development of the media and its relevance uh, uh, to the uh, national agendas and national uh, and sustainable development. And uh, one of the uh, important uh, areas of our support for different schools of journalism, and you mentioned also in the southern part of Africa, but in many, in many cases, so we have projects in small island development states. Uh, we are supporting just one example in the Pacific, a network of women journalists uh, 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 for climate change and for uh, disaster risk preparedness. Um, uh, I do believe that uh, um, media workers and journalists play an extremely important role in passing these messages. You mentioned uh, uh, also uh, science. Uh, you mentioned to yourself um, uh, natural uh, disasters. Um, uh, in fact, uh, when we speak about some of the uh, 
prevention, uh, disaster risk reduction and prevention, part of uh, what uh, we want to achieve, we want to do, is uh, the preparedness of journalists for reporting uh, in similar situations. Uh, in some parts of the world, we are uh, heavily involved also with uh, supporting journalists and uh, training them uh, so that they can report uh, in climate change. Their reporting also on science is, uh, uh, is critical uh, because we believe that the uh, knowledge and the understanding, the interface, as we say, between science and policy is extremely important. And uh, I say interface between science and policy, allow me maybe within brackets uh, to mention that here we have uh, Professor Kuroda uh, uh, with us, uh, who is a member, uh, uh, first of all, uh, laureate, UNESCO laureate uh, of uh, UNESCO Real Prize for Women in Sciences, and I'm uh, very particularly pleased that uh, she is participating in this conference, but also member of a scientific advisory board that was established by the Secretary General, uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, but hosted by UNESCO, where uh, in, in some of the discussions, uh, 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 members of the scientific advisory board, uh, uh, prominent scientists, all of them have raised also the issue of how journalists report on sciences. Uh, and I just put the dots together here because on C, uh, Professor Koroda, uh, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, very important. Uh, as the minister just said, even in Japan, which is a country so much uh, interested, uh, the pioneer, uh, as we consider, in education for sustainable development. And I would say the approach to sustainability, still uh, the uh, predominant majority of the population uh, is not aware of this. Uh, we always say we have an important message, uh, the important message also of education for sustainable development and wider the sustainability. And in order for this message to pass, this is one of the uh, important, we will say, uh, channels of communication, of course, is the media. So media is vital if we want to create sustainable societies. And uh, I would strongly encourage uh, media to be more involved, to be more understanding, to know what is at stake, to be active in, in passing uh, this message. It is not just for governments to take action. This has to be translated further down together with the civil society, with universities, uh, with, the, uh, with the experts, with the private sector. But media, uh, you are the ones that are a transmission between what we want to achieve, what we want to do, and then I would say uh, to the people. So your role is vital if we want to have this awareness, strong awareness, uh, global awareness, I would say, not only here, of course, in Japan. I see many, uh, I guess, representatives of the press from other regions, from southern part of Africa. You are vital if we want really to achieve a global awareness about sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director General and Honorable Minister. This is all the time we have for the press conference this afternoon. Reporters, if you would like to stay behind, we can give you a briefing on the outcomes document and things like that. But unfortunately, our chief guests are well behind schedule and have to leave. <laughs>